Whenever we're saying about the goodness of God, I hope that you have experienced that goodness. And it's a beautiful song. It's a gorgeous song just musically and lyrically. But I hope that those words sit into your heart and that you're able to sing from experience of the goodness that God has done in your life, the good things that God has done in your life. Uh, tonight, we're continuing on in our Holy, Holy, Holy series. We've got a, uh, a few things that we've discussed already. Does anybody remember some of the things that we've gone through already in, in terms of the Holy, Holy, Holy series? We talked about the first, the first week we had an introduction. The second week we had what? Such of the G, the something of God. Goodness. Almost goodness. Greatness. The greatness of God, yes. So we talked about his majesty and just the way that he exists and how incredible and holy and pure he is. Then, last week, we talked about what? It was our brokenness. Our brokenness. Falling before the face of God and realizing that we are nothing like him. We are not holy like he is. And so, tonight is a more fun topic. We get to talk about our healing. We get to see how Isaiah was cleansed and then how we can also be cleansed. So, I want to I want to uh, just start talking about. We had some beautiful weather recently, haven't we? But last week it was not so beautiful. Last week it was like 100 degrees, right? So I chose like the the day before the day before it cooled off to mow my lawn. So I'm out there for like two hours mowing my lawn. And y'all, if y'all know my house, you may know that I have a big hill on the side of, of my driveway and stuff, and it's all grass. So I've got a, they can't take a mower on it, so I have to weed that whole thing. And after I'm done weeding, weed eating that, my legs are just like covered in dirt and grass and stuff. And like, I think there's like, chiggers or something because I have like bites after I do that. It's it's awful. It's miserable. And and so it's, it's like I'm just like completely dirty. And then last Saturday, does anybody remember what happened last Saturday? It rained. So I was almost done with my yard, right? So I've got to finish. And I, I look up and the sky is like turning super dark. And I thought, oh no, like it's coming. I could feel like the wind picking up and stuff. I'm like, here we go. I've got just a little bit left. So I'm like, all right, let's see how fast this thing can go. I'm stepping on the gas pedal. Like, let's go. I'm, I'm cruising. And then the gas runs out. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I don't have a gas can at my house, but my grandparents live right across the street. So I'm booking it over there. And all of a sudden, bottom drops. So I'm running over there, getting soaked. I'm just completely muddy. I grab the gas can, run back, open up the gas tank, pour it in. I'm just, it's just dripping, just drenched. Put the gas can down, finish, speed racer through the rest of it. And I grab the, I don't even get off the mower. I do this one thing where I like, I just swoop down and pick up the uh, the gas can as I'm going by it. Like, I don't know if any of y'all have mowed a lawn, but like that's one of the greatest feelings when you can just kind of like, let's go, I'm, I'm professional now. Like, like, let's go and mow a bunch of lawns for a living. So anyway, I, uh, I ended up getting up there, and I finally put it back, and I put the mower up, and I'm just like dripping wet. And then I, uh, I go back into my house, and I'm like, I've got to take a shower immediately. Y'all, you, you don't understand how good a shower can be until you've been rained on after mowing and weed eating for like two and a half, three hours. It is incredible. Like getting cleaned up feels good. Getting cleaned up is awesome. And this is getting cleaned up in a physical sense, right? Like we can get cleaned up by taking a shower. But also, we need to be cleaned up spiritually as well. And we can't do that. We can't just like hop in a spiritual shower and clean ourselves up. Because the more that we try, the more we realize that we're unable to. And so we need somebody else, somebody that is holy, 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 to come into the picture and clean us up. And I want you guys to look at this passage in Isaiah 6, where we are tonight. And we're looking at uh, prophet Isaiah, and we're seeing his story of the vision that he had of God. And so we, we see that he is able to fall on his face before God because of his brokenness. But then we see how he is cleansed. He is cleaned up. So 
Let's read Isaiah 6, and it's, it's short, so we're going to read 1 through 7. We're just going to build off of what we have been reading in the past. So it starts out, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy. There it is, that number of completion. The number of three is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell amongst the people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And then hear this, in verse 6. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned. This is powerful. So we see God in His majesty. We see God sitting upon His throne, high and lifted up. His robe is filling the temple. He's got seraphim crying out, holy, holy, holy. He has the, the earth is shaking, trembling beneath Him. Smoke fills the room. Isaiah falls down because he realizes, I am lost. I am nothing like this God that sits in front of me. I am nothing like this. I am broken. I am lost. I am a man of unclean lips. And I live amongst the people of unclean lips. We're all unclean. We're all impure. We're all sinful. And I have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. But then the seraphim comes and he lifts up Isaiah's head and says, here, he touches a hot coal to his lips and says, Whenever this touches your lips, your guilt is cleansed and your sin is atoned for. Guys, some of you may need that tonight. Some of you may need to hear that tonight. We see God purify Isaiah, which is one of the greatest things about our God. He doesn't brag on himself, even though he could. He doesn't sit there and say, here, kiss my hand, kiss the rings, you know. He doesn't do that. He restores Isaiah and his brokenness. I guarantee you that I would not be this way. If I was sitting in God's position, I wouldn't do that. If somebody was bowing before me, I would think, man, I'm pretty hot stuff. In fact, this kind of happened at one point, not that somebody was bowing before me. But there was a, there was a thing at Union called Songs and Stories. And it was a new thing that the Office of University Ministries was trying to put on. And they were inviting students to, to either sing songs that they had written, original stuff, or read poems, or short stories, or anything like that. Some, you know, forms of art, um, word art, that, um, that they had written. And, and so they asked me, because I had written some poetry, to, to read one of the poems that I had written. So I was like, all right, I'll do it. So I, I wrote one and I read it to you know, a group that was, it was in the coffee shop there. So probably about twice the size of what we got here. And, and it was on the kind of God's forgiveness and uh, hope for a troubled spirit was the name of it. So you get to see you know, there's different characters, and this guy is just in brokenness, and then at the end, he sees how God has restored him, and there's some questions that the guy wrestles with. And so I, I read that, and then, you know, people clap, and I leave. But at the end of the, the time, people come up to me. Like, I have a little fan club, because I just read a little poem. And I was like, whoa, this is weird. I've never had this before. Like, I'm not a celebrity. What's going on here? And they're like, hey, like, if we started a poetry club, I think that you would be great in this thing, and I would love for you to, I'm like, oh, wow, thank you, like, this is great. Like, I'm kind of like, all right, like, let's pat myself on the back, I wrote a good poem, or whatever. But, like, trying to take credit for, like, something that God, you know, had really laid on my heart at that moment. And so, I, I 
just had this terrible attitude about like these guys think I'm great and yeah like that's that's pretty cool stuff and then like after that they never talked to me again you know I was like oh that was just a one time deal all right cool like so I don't think I'm actually that great they're just trying to build their poetry club up but it was like it, it was this like prideful feeling that I had and I realized after that moment that like I think way too much of myself and I had already known that to some extent, but like as soon as I got a little piece of glory, like as soon as I got a little piece of like somebody commending me for my stuff, I just like ate it up. And I thought, man, that is great. Like I need more of that. And God doesn't do that. We see God in this situation not say, here, Isaiah, kiss my hand, kneel at my feet, bow before me because I'm so great. He says, here, I'm cleansing you. I'm going to raise you up. I'm going to lift your head up. I'm going to restore you. And that is incredible. When people bow down before the feet of the Lord Host, He doesn't stick out His hand and tell you to kiss it. He stoops down to the ground where you lay in order to lift you up. And that is so cool. Our God is a God of healing. He's a God of restoration. He's a God who fixes the broken. When Isaiah came to him crying out that he was lost, the Lord purified him. God didn't rub Isaiah's brokenness in his face. He picked him up. He said, your guilt is taken away and your sins are atoned for. Your sins, the, the price has been paid for those sins. This is essentially what he said. You don't have to worry about that anymore. I've taken care of it. So, some of you might need to hear that tonight. You might be wrestling with the fact that you're broken. You might be wrestling with specific brokenness, brokenness in your life, a specific brokenness in your life. You might be wrestling with the fact that you can't live up to somebody else's expectations. You might be wrestling with the fact that somebody at school doesn't like you. You might be wrestling with the fact that you are tempted by something that you know you shouldn't do. And you need to realize that God is there not to rub that in your face, but to lift you up and say, hey, come to me and your sins are forgiven. Your sins are atoned for. You don't have to worry about that anymore because I've taken care of you. Just like he cleansed Isaiah, the Lord can cleanse you as well. So think about that. If you're wrestling with those things, if you're wrestling with lying, you're wrestling with stealing, dishonoring your parents, come to the Lord and your guilt will be taken away and that burden lifted. If you struggle with things like drunkenness, if you struggle with things like sexual immorality, if you struggle with things like wrong thoughts about other people, come to the Lord and He will fix you, put you back together, heal you, restore you. Our God is a great God. He is a holy, holy, holy God. And He can lift you up and fix that brokenness in your life. I want us to think for a moment about what God did in order to save us. Because sometimes we don't really wrap our minds around the fact of how great God is. Even when we see pictures of, like, of, of this, like in Isaiah, we don't really understand how truly great God is. Think about this. God saved you by coming to this earth in the form of man. God saved you by coming to this earth in the form of man, not to be some great, glorified, majestic leader that everybody loved and appreciated, but to be somebody who was beaten, who was mocked, who was scorned. Think about God in this temple. This, the train of, the ro of his robe is filling the temple. He's got angels crying out. He's got everything that anybody could ever want. And yet, what does he do to save you? To save me? He gives that up. He puts that to the side. 
And he humbles himself. And he humbles himself to become a servant for you. He becomes a servant for mankind. He puts away his majesty. He lays that down in order to serve you. Think about what he did for his disciples right before he was crucified. He washed their feet. That is a trademark of a servant. He put aside his glory. He put aside his majesty to come and be born in a stable. There wasn't even enough room for him in the inn. He was born in a place with a bunch of filthy animals. And then he died one of the most gruesome deaths ever to die so that he could save you because you are his child and he loves you. He's giving himself up so that you can have life with him and that you, you can have a relationship with your creator. He put aside his majesty to restore each and every single one of us. The Bible says that we were dead in our trespasses and sins, but through Christ He has made us alive. He has given us this new life. He has restored us. He has put new breath in our lungs. The God who atoned for the sins of Isaiah, He atones for yours as well. He can forgive your sins just like He forgave the sins of Isaiah. So He sent us to Himself in the form of man and then he allowed himself to be beaten to the point of death he became obedient to the point of death Philippians 2 talks about and then because of that he is glorified forever and that's why we sing holy 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 because he is that is how great our God is the Bible says that if you believe in him tonight then you will be healed you will be cleaned up just like Isaiah John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. When you believe in Jesus, Scripture says that you become a new creation. The old has passed to behold the new has come. You put away those old ways of living and you take on the new clothes of righteousness through Christ Jesus. So basically, the old me is dead and gone, just like Justin Timberlake said. Quit trusting yourself for your salvation and fall at the feet of our Lord. When you cry out how lost you are, our Holy Savior will bring you home. He will restore you. There truly is no one like our Lord. You will never find a single person on earth who can heal you like our God can. In chapter 10 of Jeremiah, verses 6 through 10, it says, There is none like you, O Lord. You are great, and your name is great in might. Who would not fear you, O King of the nations? For this is your due. For among all the wise ones of the nations and in all their kingdoms, there is none like you. They are both stupid and foolish. The instruction of idols is but wood. Beaten silver is brought from Tarshish and gold from Apez. They are the work of craftsmen and of the hands of the goldsmiths. Their clothing is violet and purple. They are the work of skilled men. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. At His wrath, the earth quakes and the nations cannot endure His indignation. This is who our God is. There is none like Him. Our God is holy. Holy, holy. The idols of our heart are nothing compared to our God. Whatever it is that's keeping you from that healing, lay it down. Set it at His feet. And He will give you more joy than anything this world could ever offer. As we close tonight, I want you to think about three questions. The first is, do I see God as the holy God that He is? Or have you been thinking of Him as something ordinary? Do you know God as the holy God that He is? 
And have you come to that holy God for healing? Have you laid yourself down and said, God, I am broken and I need your restoration. I need you to clean me up. I need you to heal me. If you haven't, lay those burdens down at the feet of Jesus. And take upon his burden. He says it in, in the Gospel of Matthew that his burden is easy. His yoke is light. So take upon his light. His light yoke there. And the last thing that I want you guys to think about is who can I tell about Jesus this week? Who can I tell about Jesus this week? If God has transformed your life, then that should put more joy in your life than anything that you have ever come in contact with. So who can I tell about this good news this week? Would you pray with me? God, I thank you that you are holy, holy, holy. We do not deserve to come before your throne. We don't deserve to even exist. We have sinned and we have messed up. And God, we fall broken at your feet. Thank you that you are not like others who would rub that in our faces. Thank you that you lift us up. That you restore us. That you purify us. That you pass along your holiness to us through your Holy Spirit. God, I pray that you would be with each student tonight. If they know you, I pray that you would restore them if they feel broken. God, I pray that they would see who you truly are and understand that there is always forgiveness with you. No matter what they've done, they can come to you, lay that burden down, and you will restore them. God, I also pray for those who don't know you, that they would come to know you tonight. That they would know how great and marvelous you are. That you are a God who heals the sick. God, you bring the lost home. Father, you fix the broken. I pray that we would all set our brokenness down at your feet. Take on your easy burden. God, we love you. We pray all this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen.